All right, in this video, we are looking at the Time Express uh, application and how to use it and what it can be used for. So, what I have on screen here is the actual Time Express application. And the first question that people usually have is, well, how do I log into this or how do I get this? So, first thing is, is this is available on the menu inside the Schedule Express application. If you aren't familiar with what this is, then uh, check out the video on that. But inside the Schedule Express, there's actually an icon right here called Soleix Apps. It's right towards the bottom. If you click on that, you can actually select Time Express, and then what will happen is it will open up a tab just like this. All right. The other option you have is you can download this as a mobile app, and you can put it on your uh, tablet. Uh, it, it, it's designed for tablet-sized screens. Uh, nine or ten inch screens is where it looks best. And you can also download it for your smartphone if you want. Um, depending on how big your phone screen is, uh, you may have to do a little bit of scrolling around. It's not uh, specifically designed for phone screens, but uh, it does work on those. Okay, so you can get it either in the App Store, just search for Soleix Time Express, or you can go to the menu inside Schedule Express and, and open it up that way and use it on your computer. Okay, so now that's out of the way, the next thing to look at is, you know, what is this intended for? What is this for? So this is basically a control center type of an application. Uh, it's meant to show you things day by day, and it's meant to be used to uh, basically allow you to confirm, you know, are your, are your people showing up on time? Are they late? Is anyone not, not here at all? Making it, do I have to make a last minute change? stuff like that. So we know what the Schedule Express is for. That's where you would do all your scheduling. And now this is going to show you, okay, well, it's the day of the schedule. Let's see if people are actually, you know, uh, showing up where they're supposed to be. So as you can see here, I have this, uh, I'm looking at Monday, June 22, and I can see here uh, all the shifts that I have. I can see the customers that it's for. I can see the totals. I can see when they start, etc. So this is all the same information that I can see in Schedule Express. But you'll notice here, this is designed to show you one day at a time. It's meant to focus on the current day or, or one day at a time as opposed to showing you, you know, the entire week or a couple of weeks, okay? So a couple of things you can do here. Number one, you can see the schedule information, but you can also see the actual start time. So right here, actual start and actual end, they're blank. So that means that this guy, Michael, has not checked into his shift, okay? Same goes for Doug and Ellie and et cetera. They've not actually checked in, so that's uh, that potentially is a problem. Of course, if it was uh, today's date and they haven't checked in, that's something you'd probably want to follow up on. Now, if they're using the Team Express app, and again, if you don't know what that is, that's our employee app where the employees will actually use it to check their personal schedule and clock in. Then, when they do check in, the end times get populated in here for you, so you can see, okay, yes, this employee did check in, and this employee did check out, and see that. Okay. One little trick I like to show people is you can actually move these. If you're on a web browser, you can actually drag it across. So if you want to have like actual start right beside scheduled start and actual end right beside actual end, you can you can you can do that there and have them sort of line up. Sometimes it makes it easier to see if someone's you know late. So you can try that out if you want. Um, the other thing with these is you can actually search. So if you're looking for someone, like if you wanted to find shifts that all started at a, a certain certain value, you can click on these little thumbtacks. Or looking for a certain customer, you can actually just type the name in and click filter, and it'll filter on just those shifts. So just keep that in mind. These little thumbtacks are, are are good ways to search. And the other option you have is across the top, you can look for shifts for certain employees, or you can do it by customer, by site, by service. And you may have different names for these uh, uh, these things, but you can search by all the main elements of your shifts. Uh, you can search for them like this. So. All right, so that's the basics there. Now, the other thing you can do is you can actually clock people in, and that's actually useful because uh, even though you're going to have people using the Team Express app most likely, you may have some people who don't use it. You may have some people who uh, couldn't use it for whatever reason at a certain site. So you can actually clock people in. So, for, for example, for this shift here, I'm just going to select it. Once I select it, this eClock Actions becomes available to me. I can now do a clock-in function for this particular uh, employee. Uh, so I can actually clock this employee in by simply going check in. And then I get have to make three choice I have to make a choice. I can either ch check them in at the scheduled time, which was supposed to be 9 a.m. I can use choose actual, which just says 8.58, and that's because that's the time on my device as of right now. 
and then I can do other, where I can actually set the time myself, and I can choose, you know, what time they clocked in. So there's three choices, and keep in mind, this is actually going to set the amount of time of when the shift starts. So if you want to make it, you know, 9.15 or 9.30 or 9.05, that's the time the system will think, okay, we're going to start paying that person from this time. That's, that's how it works. So I'm going to go with scheduled and click check in. And you can see now the actual start gets populated. It's that easy. And, of course, you probably you could probably guess, how do I check them out? Well, you just go to check out, and it's the same three choices. So you just click on check out. And just like that, the person's checked out. Okay, so you can control, and then you can see over here the actual total is five, and the total, the shift total is five. So these two numbers match, meaning that all we said here is that the person worked the exact amount of time that they were scheduled for, right? In some scenarios, you might have someone working five and a half hours on a five-hour shift. Uh, in other scenarios, they might work four and a half hours on a five-hour shift. So these numbers don't always have to match, but when they do match up, that, that tells you that they work uh, exactly what was scheduled. All right, so that's ECOG actions. Now, the couple other things you can do if you want, if you made a mistake there, you can remove those check-ins or check-outs just by clicking these buttons very, very easily. Just click remove, it'll take it away. And the other two, other three things here are start break and break. So you can actually put a person on a break. Uh, so if they're going on lunch or going on a coffee break or whatever, and you want to record that, you can do that for them. Of course, all of these features are stuff that the, that the employee can do on their app themselves. But this is if, if they can't do it or don't want to do it or whatever, you can do it for them. And then you can also do a safety check for them, right? So that's where if this is basically just resetting their safety check timer. So if you have a 60-minute safety check set up where if they don't, you know, indicate that they're still on premise uh, every 60 minutes, if they, if they forget to do that or don't do that, you can do it for them. Uh, and that might be in a scenario where you're actually at the site or at the location and you verify that the employee is still there. So you could just reset their timer and then they won't get flagged and a supervisor won't get notified that they aren't doing safety checks. Okay, so that's the e-clock actions. So hopefully that's clear. And then the other thing you can do is you can modify the schedule. You can actually add a shift here. So this pops up, you can fill in the employee, the date, the time, the customer, the site, the service, and click add, and it'll actually add a shift to the schedule. And if you add it here, just to be clear, it'll add back here on the Schedule Express too. These two programs work together. So you can modify the schedule here. This would be some a time where, oh, last minute maybe, uh, you know, it's, it's the day of, and a customer calls you and says, hey, I need one more guard, or I need one more employee, whatever the, whatever the case is, whatever the industry you're in is, I need one more person uh, to work, uh, then you can actually use the add shift and create that. You can also update a shift. So let's grab this one down here. Let's say this shift here for Anna, if I wanted to update it, I could actually assign it to a different employee. I can change the, change the date. I could also change the time. So let's say that the things have changed, and this is going to be 10 to 3 now instead of 9 to 2. So i just do that, save it, update. If I go back here, and if I just hit the refresh here on my schedule, on my schedule express, you'll see that it's updated as well on the schedule express side. So these two programs work together. It's not like uh, you know you have to do it in one or the other. They actually work in tandem. So a change made in one does affect uh, the other. All right. So here's the shift that I changed for Anna. It's now 10 to 3. Okay, it's been moved. All right, so that's, a, that's how easy that is for add an update. And then, of course, you have delete. Uh, you know what that does. That actually gets rid of a shift. So you can actually delete it, and you just have to confirm that, and it gets rid of it. Okay, and the other tool I want to show you is the find replacement. So let's say that someone calls in sick or calls off, can't come in. Let's grab this shift here. Employee calls in uh, maybe last minute, maybe, they, maybe an hour before the shift starts or something. It says, I'm sick, I'm not coming in. And now you have to find someone to cover their shift. So let's go to Modify Schedule, Find Replacement. This will now give you the option to search your database for an employee that suits that shift. And then you can see across the top, I have zero requirements right now. I have nothing selected. However, and I get some people to choose from. As I go through this, I may decide don't cause any overtime. I may decide make sure that they're qualified. I may decide, you know, not scheduled on this date. Uh, I may decide to, you know, as I start picking up, picking through these things, the, the employees down here can change depending on the requirements I choose. So, you know, experience at customer site, 
Okay, and now I actually get no data because I have no employees that have experience there, so I can take that off. So you can actually go through these requirements and decide, you know, this is this is the kind of person I'm looking for. I want someone who's qualified, that won't cause overtime, maybe they have previous experience there, et cetera. And then they, these employees will be filtered, okay? Uh, same thing goes for across, so that's the requirements. There's also departments, positions, and then types. So these may be something you use, uh, maybe not, may not, but if you have your employees grouped by department, uh, maybe position, or by type, full-time, part-time, you may have some other way of uh, classifying your employees. If you have them categorized that way, then when you do that, like if I got full-time, see I have nobody in the full-time category, so nobody comes up, but it'll actually filter on that and show people that only belong to those categories. So you can use that, like use some requirements, use some, uh, maybe use a type or a position and help find someone who's the right fit for the shift. Uh, you can also look for their availability. All right, so in previous videos we talked about you know what is availability and how to what is how does an employee use it and what is it useful for? Well, this is where it could become in handy if if someone has said they're available in this case it's a nine to two shift nine nine to two shift right if they had availability that matched up to this, then if we check this, no well, in my case it had nobody, but if I did have someone, they would pop up and then I know, okay, now I'm making a really good decision because I'm grabbing someone who said they were available during that time. Okay, and then there's also three check boxes or three here. So not during uh, consecutive days off. So you can say like one, two. You can you can put in the number of of days consecutive days off that don't want to have applied. And you can say total hours less than. So you could say show me people who have less than I don't know 17 hours a week, right? And then you can see it filtered and show the people who have less than 17. You can do it that way if you're trying to give us, get, have a nice balanced schedule where you're trying to give it to people with uh, less less hours. And you can also do rest period where if someone's worked, uh, let's say they haven't had a rest period of at least 12 hours, so sometimes that's a requirement. You can do that and that can also filter things further. So you can choose those options too. Now, the one thing with the filters is you don't have to sort of think about this every time. You may go through this and go, well, I know that if I'm doing a replacement, I always want someone who's qualified, won't cause overtime, has less than 30 hours a week or whatever. Well, you can set up this requirement, and then what you can do is you can save that filter. And you can give it a name. I could just call it my default replacement filter. But you could have multiple filters that you save and use, and then it'll actually pop up right here. And that just sets all the checkboxes for you as far as what your preferences are. Okay. So let's say you've chosen your requirements and you've gotten a good list here, and these are the employees you can choose from. So I can now go through and decide who I want to give this to. So if I have the employee's phone numbers inputted, which these employees don't have, but if they had, the phone numbers would show up in here. So if I wanted to, I could oh, see right on screen, okay, this employee here, this is the phone number. Let me shoot them a text. Let me give them a call and see if they can work. Okay, if you wanted to double check that, right, before you, before you update the shift and apply them to it. Uh, if you call them and they said, yep, then you could just select them like this and click update shift and it'll actually put them into the shift. Uh, before we actually do that, let's just look at one more thing here. You can also see what city they live in and you can also see how many hours they have daily, weekly, and monthly for the given day, the given week, and the given month. So if you were trying to give this uh, shift to someone who is, uh, you know, uh, has fewer hours for the week, this might be the way to go. Uh, maybe you want to give it to this this person here, James. He hasn't had any yet, any shifts this week. Well, let's go ahead and give him the shift. And you can see here, we replaced the employee that was assigned and we gave that one to James. So I think it was assigned to Corey before and now we replaced Corey with James. So it's that easy. Okay, so that's the find replacement feature found here on the modify schedule. Okay, and then just one more thing on, on this screen here. So this is the grid view, uh, okay. You can also click on the map view. And the map view will show you a map view of where your shifts are taking place. So I can zoom in, I can zoom out here, and I can see the numbers here, six and two. So what does this represent? Well, the number here represents the number of shifts you have at this spot. So I have two shifts here, and the pinpoint is red. So that means I have people who are late, okay? So I have Doug Donaldson's late. Let me select that. I go back to the grid view. And because I selected it there, Doug Donaldson, you can see here, now it's selected. So let me just go ahead and clock Doug Donaldson in. And I'm also, so I'm gonna check him in. 
Let me go back to the map. And now see how the color turned to gray? That means there's no more problems there. So I had a person who was late because it was past the start time, and it showed up red, and the gray indicates that I have two shifts there, but all is good for now. So I have one person checked in, that's Doug, and I have one person who's checked out, and that's Ellie. So you can see the information here, and you can just select it, and that'll highlight their shift and go back to the grid and you know work with their shift if you want to. And then, of course, here I have six. Uh, it doesn't mean I have six problems, but I have six shifts here, and I have five that are late. I have all these people that were supposed to be checked in, and they haven't checked in yet. So I have problems there. And then I have an upcoming shift later on in the day. So you can choose if you like the map view or the grid view or, you know, use a combination of the two. All right. So that's the majority of the features for Time Express and what to use. Uh, the other thing you can check out, uh, you can go back to Schedule Express using the Soleix Apps uh, tool here. So you can just click Schedule Express, that'll launch that. And you can also check out the uh, head and shoulders icon here. And you can change branch. More importantly, you can change your password. Keep in mind, your password is the same thing as you use for Schedule Express. So if you change it here, it does affect your Schedule Express login, so just keep that in mind. You can update your email address, and you can change your preferences, right? Do you prefer the 12-hour clock or the 24-hour clock, et cetera? And then you can give us some feedback. That's, that's the ideas behind uh, the head and shoulders profile option right here. Okay. So hopefully you found that useful. Uh, and uh, what I will do is in another video, we'll look at the messaging feature, which is what this is here. And we'll also have another video on the auto match and what that is and how that's used. But as far as the basic features of, of Time Express, uh, I think this covers it. All right, so uh, we will talk to you again next time.